And, you know, I think about it and I, I think, well, that's kind of inefficient, right? I mean, yeah, it's inefficient to have a person there who, who you could get rid of, a person who is really made redundant because there's already this machine that does everything that person does. There's a machine that drops the arm in front of traffic. It flashes the lights. It rings the bell. What else do you need the person to do? That clearly shows that there's a train coming. <clears throat> but, um... It's just, it's a different way of looking at um, human capital, as an economist would probably call it. Um, and I mean, I kind of like that. There's, there's something to be said for inefficiency. That's, that's another thing. Efficiency is another thing that characterizes modernity. There's this sort of driving need to cut expenses, to... Um, skimp on resources, kind of save where you can. And that's understandable because our planet is, uh, you know, running out of natural resources. We're running out of, or we're being told that we're running out of oil and natural gas and energy, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, there's this sort of uh, realization that, you know, people still need to live their lives. We can't just tear people's lives away from them because, um, you know, because of this or that, people still need to live uh, their human lives. And it goes back to what I said in my, um, actually my very first sort of vlog opinion video, uh, what does it mean to be human? And I concluded that there's a certain humanity here in Russia that uh, you don't necessarily see in other countries. And Europe is a great place, don't get me wrong. I mean, I haven't been to much of Europe, but from what I've seen there, people are, are kind, they're very nice, they're obviously well-educated, they, they live pretty well. I mean, it's not like it's a terrible, horrible place, uh, not by any means, but there's also a certain coldness and a certain um, sort of um, inhumanity that... Um, so-called modern social democratic capitalism instills in people. And that's something that's uh, uh, prevalent throughout the European Union. Um, in fact, one of the requirements, um, when a country tries to join the European Union, there's a certain list of criteria that they must meet. One of the criteria to be a European Union country is you must have a market economy as opposed to a centrally planned economy or any other type of economy. And most countries have a market economy, even Russia does now, so that's not, um, that's usually not a, that in itself is not usually a, um, a deal breaker as such. But it, it goes to show how the world is going. The, the world is starting to hinge more and more on money and the ebb and flow of money and um, human beings are actually becoming secondary to that, uh, which is obviously, to my mind, is certainly putting the cart before the horse, so to speak. And again, I won't say that that's not happening in Russia, but it's happening to a somewhat lesser extent in Russia, and it's probably inevitable. It's sort of a movement that's happening around the world, and it seems like it's just spreading but they, then again, maybe not. Maybe with what's happening in many of these countries now, maybe with what we see uh, happened in France a few years ago, remember the riots that they had in Paris around, I guess, five years ago or so? And now, of course, what's just happened in Greece and um, the different bailouts that we see uh, for European countries, maybe people will start to realize that there's, um, you know, there's something wrong with this whole sort of economic mentality that's uh, that's taken over so who knows who knows what will happen but Russia again because Russia is a more insular country it is more isolated and more insulated from those economic shocks and people here are not so interested in money they're not that worried about money they're more interested in just living a quiet life in excuse me in uh, in relative harmony with nature um, Northern European people like um, the Finnish, for example, uh, very much love nature and they love forests. Uh, that's also prevalent here in Russia. Um, Russian people, as, as you've seen, uh, are more 
apt to grow their own food and uh, things like that. Actually, here in um, in St. Petersburg, in many of the squares, you can see elderly people selling vegetables and things like that. And when I first saw that, I thought it was kind of shady. I thought, um, you know, where did these grandmothers get their vegetables from? Did they steal them? I mean, are they are they stealing vegetables and then taking them out here to sell them uh, for a little bit of extra money? But no, apparently what what happens is people grow their own food. They you know they have just a little garden plot. They grow what they can, and then they um, will take it to the squares in the city and sell it. And so that food is actually probably just about the freshest food that you can get in the city. If you go to a supermarket, the food there it will probably be okay, but it's also been, uh, been sitting in storage for who knows how long. It may have been sitting in storage for weeks. And... Um, the, the food that you buy from those little old ladies on the street corners is probably the freshest produce you can find in the city. So it's kind of funny, we have a certain trust. There, there's a certain implicit trust that people place in these big organizations and big companies. You go to a supermarket and you say, it's so big and everything is, you know, looks so clean, it's air conditioned. Uh, the food here must be very tightly, um, tightly controlled and monitored and very healthy. But actually, uh, probably the healthiest food you can get is just sold by those people who just grew it themselves in their backyard and are now selling it on the street. It's probably the place where you get the freshest food in St. Petersburg. So, you know, I'm a little bit skeptical, obviously, of um, large organizations, whether they are governments or businesses. Um, and obviously the Russian government is very large and very bureaucratic and very inefficient and so on and so on. We've all heard about that before, and yes, there's truth to that. But it doesn't really impact people's lives very much. I mean, how frequently, how often does the government actually intervene in people's lives and say, uh, you need to do this or that? It really doesn't. Other than paying taxes, um, most Russian people have appreciably little interaction with, uh, with their government which is pretty much the same in Canada and the U.S. as well. Other than paying your taxes every year, you probably don't notice the government that much. They don't really do much to you. Um, so I don't know. I'm kind of torn now. I, uh, I don't know if I'll really want to go to Europe after all or if I want to stay here. So that's where I am right now. Anyhow, uh, like I said, this will probably be one of the last videos of Russia that I'll put up at least for a while, um, or about Russia. Um, in a week or two, I'm actually going to Helsinki, uh, which of course is in Finland, and I'll probably try to get a video or two of Helsinki, but I won't be there that long. But um, I'll just, you know, check it out, see what the city is like. I've been there, I've passed through it a couple of times, but I haven't really stayed there for any length of time, so this time I'll try to explore the city a little bit, uh, going there just for like a, a one week or so vacation, so we'll see how that turns out. I may make some videos about that. So anyhow, that is how I feel. That's my conclusions about Russia. A great place, um, in many ways arguably uh, a more comfortable or at least a more um, relaxed place to live than Western Europe or Western the Western Hemisphere and I'm glad I came here. I'm actually very glad that I came here to Russia and whether I stay or not um, this place has found a certain uh, sort of place in my heart and I think I'll always have a little bit of uh, a little bit of my heart belonging to St. Petersburg. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you're all doing well and Hopefully I will talk to you folks later. Take care for now. Bye-bye.